Okay, so what I want to do here is show the different folds and the actual uh, use of each different fold and, and then apply them to certain situations where you can use them in technique. So we're just looking here at just the basic mechanics of each individual fold, explaining how they're done so you can practice them on your own. My chitin. Okay, so we'll do this for the front roll again. Take the whole thing, position all the way down to the mat. Now I'm going to show the hand, it's turned like so. Put the hand down, and then the other one next to it. Put a little bit of weight on that hand, yeah? so you keep yourself facing forward, and it allows you to lower yourself down. And then from here, you're just going to tip, tip over, and finish as if you're facing forward with your ankles underneath, okay, and toes bent. So you're actually up on your toes when you finish, yeah, like so. Okay. okay, just the basic structure again. I'll put hand down, like so. Keep the head tucked in, as if you're going to look forward. But as you go around, just keep the head so it rolls back inside. Don't put it on the outside, like so. Uh -huh. Cross the arm, reverse hip, down the other thigh. And then like so. Then, once you got the feeling of that, you want to do that so you're facing back where you came from. Right? So again, hand goes down, same position, you go forward, and as you do so, turn so you're in a crouch position almost. Then you stand up. One more time. Hand down, like so. Crouch position, and you stand up. When you finish, you should be in hand me. You shouldn't have your feet all spread out. You should be on balance, standing up when you finish. Yeah, a lot of people teach with the hands around like so, which is fine because the movement should be round. But after a while, once you get used to the fall, you want it to happen in a much more natural way. So I tend not to say, don't put the hand in any particular place. Just make sure it stays in a relaxed position and round. So when you take the fall, the whole thing then becomes very natural when you do it. Okay? Very natural. Okay, again, let's look at the, the toes when we do the front roll. I tend to want to keep the, the toes in a live position, so they're up like so, rather than being flat all the way down. Okay, it allows you to get up in a more natural way. It's very difficult to get up with your foot like so, unless you're being propelled forward, so your weight brings you on your front foot. But when we do the front roll, we're trying to get so you turn back into the position that you came from. So as you do the roll, and you turn around, you're keeping the toes alive so you can naturally stand up rather than uh, come up on the back of your foot. So it's much easier that way just to regain your balance. So we're going down. As we go over and we turn around, the hand, your feet are in the right position facing where you came from. Okay, now sometimes we're not caught on, in, the, in the roll in the right position, like the right hand, uh, left hand forward, uh, left foot forward, which is the natural fall. You're going like uh, rolling into it. Sometimes you call it opposite, whether it be, you know, like so, and you have to roll on the, on the other side, or left foot, uh, 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 right foot and uh, left hand. So you treat it in the same position. So this gets into the habit, you know, kind of like a cat. When you drop, you always want to land on his feet. So it gets you to the, the, the feeling that when you do your roll, you always want to get the body to land in the correct position. position. So I'll go over backwards and still end up like I've done a regular front roll and still end up in the correct position rather than land with my feet crossed, okay? So that's very important. So if a good exercise to practice is this, where you, like so, opposite side, put the other hand down, rolling again as if you're doing a regular front roll like we did before, keeping the arm round, but landing with the front foot, making it become your back leg so it gets tucked under. Like so, and then turn around. What I'll do now is just go through what we did first. We did the regular front roll, Mayukami, and I'm just going to show just basic leading exercise so Uke can learn how to walk and step into the fall naturally so they can do the front rolls. Okay, so first of all, technically. All right, so this we just need a partner for this one. And uh, the, what we're going to do is just like a, a, a Taino Henko exercise, which you do at the beginning, and then Uke is going to lead Uke forward and just naturally bring them down so they're into the front roll position so they can take the fall and then they should turn around and face. Okay? 
Notice I don't want them to run into the fall or to throw themselves. Just naturally follow the lead down to the ground, okay, as I put them down, and then allow themselves to just tip over into the fall. Okay, let's demonstrate a few more times. Using Taino Henko as the lead, then down and forward. Okay. Down. Notice as I lead down, Uke must bring themselves down to the mat. So they let the legs bend, touch, and then allow themselves to roll over. Okay. You can also do the same thing as if you're doing Uchi Kaiten. So then they step and then into the front row. Again, I'm not focusing on trying to throw them. It's their practice to follow the lead naturally as they fall off balance into the fall. Generally speaking, if the hand is free, if I've got a hold of this hand, you're going to want to take your roll with the hand that's free, not on the side that they're holding. So if I'm standing like this, no, this, this stays right, like this, and Uke doesn't move, and they're in a position like that, then the body, because they're not following, they feel like the body wants to go on the wrong side. So you always want to end up on the lead side. So if I have Uke here and I'm leading their balance, you always want to step. So then you naturally fall on the, the free hand side. Okay? Now sometimes uh, your body's being thrown the other way, where the uke is going. Um, nage as they're throwing, is throwing inside. So then it's very difficult to roll on the other hand. So in those instances, you roll on the same side. So if I'm leading like so, and I put uke down, this position, say, then you fall on the same side, not on the opposite side, because that's going across yourself as you're trying to take the fall. Yushiro Kaiten. Okay, now we'll do Yushiro Kaiten, which is the regular back roll. And uh, now, personally, I just think of it as the front roll, just reverse, and practice it in that same manner. Okay, so we're going to do the reverse of the front roll. Reverse hip, cross the body, shoulder, back down to the arm. Again, remembering to protect the head and back of the spine. So you tuck everything under, put the hands down, sit back, and your hand should finish in the same position, then up. Okay. So again, starting, live toes sitting down like so, hand down in front, the other one next to it. Back, finish into the front roll, then you can stand up. Again, body should be in hand, not a wide stance, should be in the same line. Okay. Then once you get used to that and you're doing that, the basic movement, then we start from standing. Sit down into it, so you're going to go into the same position. Sit down, kneel down, so the whole body goes down to the mat. Now don't do the roll like that and just sit straight back without touching the knee. Okay. So as you go back, sit down, tuck everything under, and then stand up. Okay. Okay. Again, you sit down. Tuck, and then stand up. Okay, now once you've got the hang of that, then you just do the whole thing in, again, like before with the front row, in a, in a relaxed manner rather than in a set form. So you just sit back, just as if you're going to walk back. You sit, and then stand up. Okay? Again, keep everything in front of you. Shoulders must stay relaxed and allow the head to bend. Don't throw your head back. We're trying to make the roll small. Okay, back. And stand up. Okay. Now, with the danger thing with the back roll is that people tend to want to go over their head as if they're doing a, a gamble, like, like so, going over. Okay? Remember, you want to keep the head away from the mat, so you don't want your head to hit the mat at all. So, just like a front roll, the whole thing is turned sideways. It's not like you're doing a gamble straight forward. As your body approaches the mat, it turns. So, when we do the back roll, it's the same thing. We keep everything to that same angle. Don't allow your back to go back square. Okay? So as you sit, you keep the angle. So as you go back, the head stays well away from the mat, and you don't have to worry about hitting your head. Okay? And the, this, the same safety aspects as the front roll. You know, you're not hitting the back of the spine like so, and you're not hitting the back of the neck or any corners as you do the roll.